Schedules can either be a self-constructed prison of responsibility or they can be the guide rails that guide you towards accomplishing your goals. While there are many different productivity systems, what I'm going to talk today about is the time blocking schedule. Now, this is for the productivity veterans out there uh, created by Cal Newport. So if you're any what familiar with productivity and deep work, you've for sure heard his name. And this is his planner, at least uh, a digital mock-up that I've created of the physical version. So on the left-hand spread of his planner, there's this task list and there's these idea lists uh, completed with a box at the top for daily metrics and a shutdown ritual. Now on the right, this is the unique part of it, is this grid view, my crude drawing of a graph. Uh, and really what he does here is he draws out in an hour or half hour increments, the task that he's going to do. Now, I've used the physical planner for a little while, but it took me away from Obsidian, a tool that I've been rather obsessed with lately. And so I thought that I might figure out how to uh, incorporate time blocking into Obsidian. And I've done so rather successfully. And here's kind of what it looks like from a schedule. So this requires a couple plugins. Um, it requires a calendar plugin, a daily notes plugin, and then this day planner plugin to kind of emulate the graph view. Uh, so in Workdown, what you can see is that I have the daily metrics. My daily metrics are hours of deep work, number of words written, and number of pages read because you can't uh, write pro prolifically if you don't read prolifically. Uh, and so I, I track both of those metrics. And then there's a little checkbox for the shutdown ritual uh, and then the tasks and ideas and schedule. Now, tasks and ideas, is your first inclination is going to be this is where I put the stuff for the day. It's actually not. It's, a, it's the scratch space that you, that you use to, to capture the tasks and ideas that you have throughout the day, the ones that aren't necessarily urgent enough to disrupt your particular workflow. So you, what you see below is a rough schedule for, for my day. So at the very beginning of my day, I started a deep work session of uh, around an hour and a half for writing uh, Reclaim, a book I'm working on. And I worked on a chapter called Like, Hack, like Hacked. Um, and then I worked on, you know, for my good morning work session for work, I worked on some Terraform storage issues. Um, and I created a template for this. So each time I create a new day, if I create a day for tomorrow... It's going to pull from that template, and I have in that template my, my rough structure of my day. Um, what makes it uh, useful in Obsidian that I can kind of mock up the day is this day planner. So over here, I have all these time blocks. So I even poured in my meetings so I don't have to have Outlook or Teams open when I'm doing my deep work because I have these buffers, these time blocks in between that. And you can see there's this little red bar. I'm approaching my shutdown time. Um, and so that's the day. Now, at the end of each day, part of your shutdown ritual is to move your tasks and ideas either to the next day or to a week. And how I've accommodated that weekly review, what Cal Newport has in his planner is with a different note, which is just the name. Well, it's the it's named the year and then the the name of the month, and it keeps it right at the top. And then in here, instead of having a spread for each week, I have one file and then a heading that is in here for each week. And in his planner, he kind of says that there's, you need to have some flexibility inside your planner, especially your weekly one. So you can have the fine grain day by day, or you can have this kind of like a general um, overview of what you want to do. Like I actually want to start learning Kusto and start to read the book Paradox of Choice. And that's what I'm going to do in week two of July. Um, and then maybe I'll design a new YouTube cover. Probably not, though, because that's not going to be that fun. Um, so that's the basic premises. So every day you have to go back to that. You have this time block schedule where everything is planned out. You can continue to work in your knowledge base in Obsidian or take other notes in your front panels here that you see. Uh, and then you can update your, your daily note as you need. As you come in, you have meetings, you have ideas. And you always get to see this presence on the left that you can you know, hide and expand depending on what you're doing. Uh, and then you can float between the different days with the calendar. So that's a general overview of how I've been using time blocking in Obsidian. If you want to learn how to set this up, I wrote a blog post article that you can see or that you'll be able to find in the description. Uh, but with that, I hope this is useful and thanks for watching.